In today's video, I'm going to lay out my YouTube custom thumbnail process within Canva. I'm Amanda Horvath and I'm all about eliminating the obstacles to getting you sitting where I'm sitting right now, in front of the camera, sharing your message with the world. So if you're ready to start that video show you've been dreaming of, then be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Now before you actually design these thumbnails, you're going to need some photos to work with. So you have two options for that. The first option is the simplest. So whenever you're filming your YouTube videos, you always want to make sure I always do my, my whole take. I stop recording. I hit recording again because I'm already set up in video mode. I'm not going to switch over to camera mode. And then I sit in frame like this and I'll do multiple YouTube faces and I'll freeze frame those and export them as JPEGs out of Premiere Pro. If you don't know how to do that, I will link to a video in the cards and in the description below showing you how to do that. Now, the second option is to do a shoot with a professional photographer. And this can be extremely helpful in terms of creating YouTube thumbnails, different promo materials, maybe for your website, for Instagram, for different things like that. But the one thing that I would keep in mind whenever you are shooting with a photographer is that most photographers these days are used to shooting Instagram type content. Typically, you're gonna be in the center of the frame, smiling at the camera, right? And they're gonna crop it to, they're thinking square content, square photos or vertical photos. Well, that doesn't work too well for YouTube. What you want is to have yourself on either the left or right side of the frame, and you wanna have dead space on one side so that you can add text. This is going to make your life so much easier and it will make a lot more sense when we get into Canva. So without further ado, why don't we dive on in and I'll show you my process. So when you first get Canva open, it's going to look like this. It has a lot going on for you, multiple templates, as well as any recent designs that you have created. What I would recommend doing is creating one file that you're going to use on repeat for the thumbnails for each quarter of the year. If you're doing weekly, for example, that's what I do. So you go create design and then you're going to just do custom size 1920 by 1080 and create design. Then go ahead and name this thumbnails or 2021 thumbnails. I like to name it the year and then whatever quarter it is. So we're coming up on Q4 right now in 2021. So I'll name this Q4. So within this document, I'm going to quickly show you how to add photos, import photos into Canva, and then how to remove the background if you would like to do that so that you pop out from the image how to add different clip art or different elements to make your thumbnails more interesting, as well as how to add text to your graphics. These are the basic things that you'll need to do when creating thumbnails. And then after that, I wanna dive into some of the previous quarter thumbnails that I have to talk about the psychology that goes into these designing these thumbnails as well, because that is a big part of it. So let's start with how to upload a photo. If you go to uploads and then just click upload media, then you can navigate to wherever the photos are on your computer and select one and click open. I've already imported many of them, so I'm just going to grab one that I've imported into the past. And then you can just grab that and you have two options when you drag it over. If you drag it over, you'll see that at one point it snaps to the background. That is going to take that image and make it your background for that canvas. There you go. Or you can kind of drag it over to where it's not full frame and that is how you will drag it in if you need to remove the background. So let's show you both ways. So we'll drag it over to be the background, then we'll duplicate that and you can just click here whenever you need to duplicate one, duplicate a page. We'll delete that and we'll make it smaller on this one and I'll show you how to remove the background. Click on your photo, click edit image, then click background remover. It does its magic and voila, there you are, just yourself and no background, which is really convenient. So then you can use any sort of photos from Canva to have it be your background or you can have it just be a blank color as well, so I'll show you that first. If you click on the background, 
then we can click on background color here and just make the background a color. So that's one option. And I can scale myself up as big as I want to be or as small as I want to be. Whatever you want to do works. Or if I wanted to have another background, then I could go into photos right here and I could choose another background, like maybe these flowers could be my background. I don't know, this is a terrible example, but you get the idea. <laughs> and if I ever wanted to add effects to this photo behind me, all you have to do is click on it, go to edit image, and then go to adjust, and there's all of these settings that you can adjust. You can bring, you can blur the background so it's not so uh, distracting. You could bring down the saturation if you wanted. You could bring up the contrast. You can really play with it so that it looks different. And this is kind of how you can start getting creative within Canva. And this is why we will be talking about the mindset approach to it too, because that is just as important. <laughs> Something went off on my computer. That is just as important, if not more so important than the actual design of it. The two have to go hand in hand together. All right, so you now know how to import a photo, how to remove the background from it, how to add a new background using the photos available to you in Canva. Now let's talk about how to add text to your photo. So you would click on this text tool here and you would just drag this add a heading into it and we'll say text goes here. Select it and then right here you can drop down and you can choose whatever your brand font is just by typing it in. Mine is Bebus New and I make it bold. And then you can go to font size here to scale it up to whatever font size is going to work for you. Center that font. And the text is a little bit far apart from one another. So if you wanted to kind of squeeze the text together, then you can go to the text spacing and squeeze them like that. And then let's say you wanted to add some sort of rectangle behind them. That's kind of how I do mine. I just have some rectangles behind words and it's that's like the absolute bare essential basics that I do when it comes to designing my thumbnail. So in order to do that, you just go to elements and then right here, lines and shapes, drag that over and we can just make it smaller as needed to kind of fit this text. And if we wanted to change the color of that, we can click this color tab here and change it to whatever color. If we wanna change the color of the text, you just highlight it and you would go right here to change the color of the text. And if you wanted to duplicate this, you can click on that box, control C, control V, super simple. And we can paste another one down here, loosely where they need to go. And then in order to send them to the background, you right click, send back, and you can use the up and down arrows to kind of move them after you send them to the back because if your text is covering that square, it's gonna be really hard to like grab it and move it yourself. So the left and right tools will be your best friend in this scenario. Now, one quick trick in general that's very, very helpful, in order to ensure that the rectangle itself is aligned to the words, you're going to use the align tool. So you go under position and then you align center and that will center those things up. And you can kind of move this around to get it to be center of the frame as well. Now, one other quick design tip that I want to cover before we dive into the mindset portion of this is how to add different elements to your images as well. So when you go underneath elements, you can type anything in here. You can type, like you can see things that I've typed, arrow, dollar bills, bills, money, lines, shapes. You can kind of look through different graphics that are available to you. And you know you can just drag them on and scale them up and rotate them and do all the things that you want to do. Some sometimes you can change the colors of them, so it's like, oh, cool, let's make this my brand colors. You know, whatever it is. 
So you can play around with these to get creative. Before we move on to mindset, if this video is resonating with you and helping you out in your journey, then please be sure to click like and drop your experience in the comment section below, as well as any other questions you might have regarding Canva or YouTube thumbnails. Now, in order to dive into the mindset portion of YouTube thumbnails, we are going to flip on over to my editorial calendar, which I keep within Trello. And in this, I'm able to see the title that I'm planning to call the video, as well as the thumbnail right beside each other. And this can be really helpful because the thumbnail on its own should say something, but then the title along with the thumbnail, they can kind of add context to one another, which can increase your chance of someone actually clicking through to watch that video. My favorite reason or favorite thing about doing this within Trello is that if I click on any of these, I can kind of see the various options in a very small format, which is kind of how someone's going to experience it when scrolling on their phone, going through YouTube or on the home page. It kind of shows you, can they read the text? And then I can make that the cover image, whichever one it is. And then I can see that right along with my title. Four essential stages to make money with courses. Maximize sales. Okay, cool. So those two kind of go along with each other. And which one looks the best? Here's kind of an iterative process that is good to see. So I started with just this one and then I did a different face, right? Sometimes you just test different faces and this is like the bare bones basics, screen recording, text, right? And then I was like, well, maybe I need to make it a little bit better. And so I then added this money background, cut myself out, added the money background. And I was like, well, now it looks a little bit busy. So then I went ahead and blurred the background, which you know how to do all of those things now. So starting to get creative and playing around with it and doing the iterative process and giving yourself enough time to design the thumbnail is going to increase the views on your videos. So let's dive into another example where I got creative. So how to start using affirmations and achieve the impossible. So it started like this basic photo with some words, attract your dreams, right? And I was like, eh, I don't know about that. Effortless goal setting. Well, maybe I do it like this, climb higher with ease. But in the reason that this has this block over here is because this photo was once again shot for Instagram and not didn't have dead space. Uh, so I was trying to get creative with how to use it. Same with that photo and like shift your reality. You can kind of see the iterative process here. And I eventually ended up with, ooh, what if I cut myself out of the background and I had myself sitting on the words? So I thought that was kind of fun to test out. Here you can see an example where I added some clip art, like I'm thinking through something, discover what you want. And I'm sure there were some iterative options of this one too, trying different photos trying different text as well to see what is going to stick. Now, one last thing before I wrap this video, because this video is getting oh so long, <laughs> is that if you have TubeBuddy, which if you do not, I will link to my affiliate link in the description below. And it is an amazing tool that is an essential tool, in my opinion, for YouTube. If you have TubeBuddy, you can actually split test, A-B test your thumbnails after the video is posted. So if you have a second favorite, then you can always run a split test right after posting your video and you will see this thumbnail is actually increasing the click-through rate compared to this one. And that's going to make a major difference in once again, your views. So I would highly recommend getting both Canva and TubeBuddy and once again, if you're down to use my affiliate link, I would oh so appreciate it. My goodness, this has been a long video. If you are still watching this, clearly you have found value in this video. So do me a favor and be sure to click like and drop your comments below, letting me know what resonated with you. And if you wanna learn how to optimize your YouTube video to ensure that it can maximize your reach, then be sure to watch this video right here on how to do that. And I use TubeBuddy within that. So if you haven't already checked out TubeBuddy, then you'll see it more in that video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.